All right, and we're live. Welcome, everyone, to the first show of Pot Splits, the weekly lightning talk. Today, we have Maxim Olovsky of Pandora Core with us. And I'm also joined by our co host, Ben Ark. Hello. Hi, Maxim. Hi, Ben. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. So, just before we start, a few words about the show itself. Um, we are right now on a Jitsi call, the three of us, and we're streaming to YouTube. Jitsi is a great open source software that um, allows us to do that. It's free. You don't have to sign in uh, or leave any data. It doesn't store any personal data, so check it out. There's a couple of free instances out there. Uh, one of them is meet.fullmo.org. We're using the official Jitsi instance right now because we had some problem, problem setting up the live stream on our own instance. So if you have know how to do that, um, reach out to us and we would be thankful for your help. The second thing is we'll be taking questions. So please um, write your questions either in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you like it. So questions either in the comments or on Twitter using the hashtag PodSplits or you can also ask questions in the PodSplits Metamost channel on mm.fulmo.org. Metamost is also a free open source um, software. It's pretty much a open source replacement for Slack. So feel free to join that channel and um, ask any questions you have, either me, uh, Maxime, or Ben. Since Maxime is our um, guest today, most questions, I guess, will go to him. And that is pretty much for the technicalities right now. I'm very happy to have Maxime here, and I'll just let him do the talking. Hi, Maxime. Hi. Hi, everybody. And thanks for inviting and giving this opportunity to share and discuss the vision that we've been discussing with the Lightning Network community guys for quite a while. So my topic today, I will be switching to slides for now. My topic today would be a bit broad. I, I'd like to share the stuff we are doing with the LNPBP initiative. Basically, it's a kind of non-organization. We found this very interesting way of doing a non-organization Bitcoin only in Switzerland. And this whole organization is trying to support the development of layers on top of Bitcoin protocol and Lightning Network protocols that will allow much more applications than just a simple usual payments. That's why it's around PVP like TCPAP, the stuff for the new Internet of Value and Internet of Sovereignty uh, for everybody. So it would be a bit of visionary talk, but I will spend uh, time to cover quite a lot of technical details. So I would like to engage the technical community developers to join our forces on the south that we are doing. It's all, of course, everything is open source, not company backed. Uh, while uh, like I'm, I'm a part of a company, I have a for-profit company entity and it does a lot of work in this sphere. But again, all the standards they in GitHub repository are under LNPPP, which is non-profit. And all the sponsors who support the development of these technologies and and uh, protocols like Bitfinex, uh, Fulgur Ventures and other, uh, they all do it in non-corporate uh, free grant uh, way. So thanks for them as well. Um, I think we all believe, all I mean, the sponsors of this technology development and people from community who contribute to the development of technologies, we all believe that there is a future for Lightning Network. And this future is not just a payment scalability layer for Bitcoin. It's a foundation layer for the future internet of sovereign individuals. And this future, if we would like to bring this future closer to fulfilling, this future means that a lightning network has to be a layer on which complex smart contracts can be built. By complex smart contracts, I mean thing that can financially, it's a financially enforceable trustless interactions. Because if we are talking about 
internet of sovereignty of sovereign individuals it means financial sovereignty it means that you control your private keys and you control the operations that you perform and the same should be for smart contracts it must be only <clears throat> yourself who define the form of contracts you are creating and uh, who actually must be uh, who must be sure that in a trustless environment, in an anonymous environment, you still get the contract fulfilled or enforced without any KYC or stuff like that. So basically the idea here is not that we don't need smart contracts like in usual blockchain industry, uh, because we have this idea floating around since the Ethereum time that let's do the smart contracts and it all come down to tokens, issuing tokens, doing ICOs, uh, DAOs and that kind of stuff. Basically, it is not the way that we don't, uh, it is the way that we don't need. Uh, it's not only because there is a lot of scam related to ICO, but it also because of the fundamental problems with the smart contracts design used in ethereum like systems and all, you know, all this whole blockchain industry basically what's wrong with them uh there is always a centralized or federated issuer it's not a problem because if you issue something other than money there is usually something behind that but this issuer not just issues this party controls contract code forever and you basically don't have a true ownership of the data stored in the smart contract or even worse of the assets or any including tokens anything that is controlled by that smart contract uh why so well i will give just a simple example we all know with a bitcoin if the security uh, of the elliptic course is not broken we can put our seed phrase into a safe for 10 years uh come back and if the safe wasn't broken the bitcoins are still there and nothing in the world can change that with ethereum like smart contracts you have something under your smart contract it doesn't mean that it should be tokens or assets it could be any kind of information uh, that you would like to be keeping ownership of and you can put into a um, safe again your private keys and in 10 years uh, you don't know would you be still controlling it because basically it's not controlled by your private keys it is controlled by the smart contract and smart contract can modify the data with being published a new version of smart contract doing migration or creator of them they just using uh the code to update the state without your direct involvement so it basically means neutral ownership and that's why there is a wave of kyc happening well, of course, of regulators, but another reason, because basically smart contracts, they not enforce economical uh, fulfilling. And it is miners and issuers who rather have the power to enforce something because smart contracts are explicit. They've seen by all miners. And we had this situation of work because of the hack, DAO hack famous. So basically miners are arbiters of the smart contracts. It's not like, with Bitcoin, well, you have you can have a deep reorg, but again, we don't have that kind of full during complete smart contracts in Bitcoin, fortunately. And also, there are issuers, the creators of these smart contracts, the people who does ICO or doing other stuff like DAOs, they have a substantial power over the smart contracts. So that's not the smart contracts. The smart contracts for uh, the economy that we would like to build should break the uh, loop of attribution should work in trustless anonymous environments without any kyc arbitrage by miners or contract issuers so what can be example of a proper smart contract systems first of all this bitcoin script bitcoin script for the ownership of course ownership of bitcoins but not only bitcoins also there could be a data or even assets I will tell briefly in the future how RGB is leveraging that. So Bitcoin script can control ownership and it has been proven for over 10 years of doing that in a self safe manner. No, was, no one was able to break the security model of the Bitcoin script so far. The second case of the smart contracts 
are scriptless script based solutions like DLC, discrete log contracts. I'm quite, quite sure there would be much, much more examples appearing of the scriptless script applications to build uh, smart contracts. And the third thing uh, is RGB, the project that is built by uh, us, by LMPBP Standards Association and Pandora Core. And it allows a complex Turing complete scripts using simplicity future, which we hope will be released at some day by Blockstream. And it utilizes client validated state, a paradigm developed by Peter Todd, allowing you to store uh, and run quite complex contracts uh, off chain. I will be covering that a bit later, actually. The next slide. Uh, how we are building the smart contracts with RGB. First of all, the step one, remove data from blockchain. By blockchain here, uh, we will mean only Bitcoin blockchain, not some other blockchain. Layer one of Bitcoin protocol. So we need to remove data from blockchain. For that, we use client-side validation, meaning that the data are stored by the clients. You keeping you are keeping the data. You are not storing them in blockchain. It's your obligation to keep them safe. The the way that you keep safe your private keys. This solution gives you a scalability because you don't utilizing blockchain space and storage. It gives you a privacy because the data are not in blockchain. They are not accessible by on chain analysis tools. There are no mi minor incentives or to extort the data or to do a censorship because they don't see the data. They don't see that there is something happening. And for sure, it, it gets the Lightning Network to support out of the box because, again, you don't store any data in the transaction. Uh, unfortunately, the, the time schedule of today, I, my talk is not about RGB. We, I gave an, a few other talks about RGB on the Lightning Conference in Berlin, in Transylvania. Uh, you can watch them uh, in YouTube. I will be explaining all the complex concepts and technologies behind it. I will be just quickly covering how it can be used to push the evolution, evolution of Lightning Network forward. But in a very brief way, uh, the core idea is that the data are kept by the client and each change of the state, smart contract state, like if you use some digital assets, uh, that could be a USD tether, for instance, issued using RGB, uh, each time you transfer it, you create another portion of data and you assign the assets and the state of smart contract to some specific transaction outputs in Bitcoin blockchain, unspent transaction outputs. And the spending of the transaction outputs means that you have to create uh, a new state and uh, you have to commit to each of the states in the DAG with a single use seals. It's another concept developed by Peter Todd. You can Google for it. And uh, with that, you have a security of Bitcoin script. You're using Bitcoin script to control the ownership while you keep the data off chain. And uh, you may ask, I just said that there is nothing in blockchain. There is nothing in transaction. There is no storage used. But you put information by making a homomorphic tweaking of the public keys and uh, that doesn't occupy space. It can't be seen by any external party like miners, but you can use it to prove that the actual change of the off-chain off state has happened. The second step to build a smart contracts like we did in RGB is to add maximum of privacy. So we have taken confidential amounts with Peterson commitments and bulletproofs. And uh, we use Merkleization in a way that actually with the constructing all these commitments, owner of some smart contract state or asset sees the state and history only for the data he owns and not for any other data. And the third step is to separate owner from the issuer. So there is only an owner, not owner, not only for assets, but for data as well. And ownership is controlled by Bitcoin script smart contract. 
it could be even scriptless script, DLC, or anything else that you can put and use with Bitcoin transaction. And that's why it also works with the Lightning channels. It works with the commitment transactions, which are on-chain, off-chain. Even if they go on-chain, the history is not broken. And the only thing that issuers does, unlikely with Ethereum and other systems, uh, issuer issues the genesis state of the smart contracts and defines the rules by which it will evolve uh, once and for always. And it is only a consensus of the owners who define if these rules may change, not an issuer or miner. So that, that, that's a vision of the smart contract that can be used for this future internet of value. Uh, enabled for Lightning Network, made with Bitcoin script, scriptless scripts, and RGB, not the way it is done in the blockchain industry. So uh, we hope that with this system, Lightning Network will evolve and layer three apps will be built on top of it. Meaning that basically we will be able to bring adoption of discrete box contracts and different stuff into the Lightning Network itself. And uh, we would like to draw a luckless way forward and to build a foundation for fast experimentation and uh, with these technologies and extension of existing Lightning software to use that. Because uh, the parts of this story is that Lightning Network anyway should upgrade for things like bi-directional channels, payment points, the replacement for HTLCs, uh, maybe you heard of that. If not, please look for this great work. Uh, Schnorr signatures to uproot is coming. We hope we will have L2 one day. And there are new existing apps on, lay uh, on layer two and three that are being built today or will be built tomorrow. We have a long uh, going, ongoing discussions about making channel factories, discrete log contracts on Lightning Network. I will be covering that. Lightspeed, Storm, Prometheus, which are basically for solutions for micropayments, trustless solutions, uh, storage and high load computings. Uh, again, there would be no a lot, not a lot of time to cover all these technologies in all details. I will give a link at the end of my talk for repositories. But basically, all of these things, they require Lightning Network to change. And we wouldn't be able to do that, updating, updating specifications over and over again for each of those technologies, bringing them one by one into the network. We need to find a way to, to generalize the evolution of Lightning Network, to unlock this power of a proper way of smart contracting over Bitcoin, uh, with quite a generic technology. And that's where we, with LMP BP Standards Association, are focusing. Uh, I already gave some details about it and our activities. You can look for the most of the stuff that I will be talking today on GitHub in LMP BP organization. What we have to do to in order to extend the Lightning Network? for all these technologies. First of all, we need to define these technologies as a well written standards. Uh, do you see my screen still? Okay. Uh, as well as written standards, uh, we named them LNPBPs, like BAPs, like BIPs, like BOLTs, but for layers on top of Lightning Network and Bitcoin protocol. Uh, and we would like to do that. Uh, after doing that, we need to reduce the protocol complexity to a few clear Lightning Network extensions. As I said, we don't need to recreate the Lightning Network each time. We need to build some way of generalizing Lightning Network extensibility. And we like a name that I propose to use for that is Generalized Lightning Network, which is actual Lightning Network extended within the scope of existing bolts, like feature flags, like custom messages, TLV extensions. They all is quite sufficient to build a parts of the technology that will be able to modularize the rest of uh, layer three solutions coming on top of that. Uh, we also need to create extensible software and SDKs like uh, Lightning Nodes that are able to support this general generalization that is able to uh, include uh, modules and plugins 
to run custom parts of Lightning Network, like replacing HTLCs with PTLC, PTLCs or adding RGB smart contracts and the rest of stuff. And we need to do a reference implementation of all, all these technologies. We are using Rust language for that. So the implementation is already happening in a Rust LMP BP library, and it will have a bindings to Wasm and native environments for mobile development. So quickly about all these parts, like how we define standards, how we reduce protocol complexity, how we create no extensible nodes and do a reference implementation. So part one, standards. These standards are in this GitHub repository, the link you see on, screen, on the screen. And the idea that uh, we would like to standardize best practices for layer two th and three solutions. Uh, these standards must not require hard or soft forks for Bitcoin itself. So all of that stuff has to go into BAPs. Uh, they must not distort Bitcoin miners' economic incentives. They must not pollute Bitcoin blockchain with unnecessary non-transaction-related data and must not require a utility or security tokens to function and must not depend on non-Bitcoin blockchain. So that are criteria to include any proposal for layers built on top of Lightning Network and Bitcoin. And if you have some idea in mind, please don't hesitate to write a pull request or an issue in this repository and propose your own protocols and solutions. So far, we have quite a big set of proposal being in the development and discussion these days. And these proposals cover such protocols as RGB and Spectrum, which I already mentioned and described. Lightspeed, I will be briefly talking about that. Uh, in future slides, Storm for storage and messaging. I've been giving a presentation about this in scaling, on Scaling Bitcoin conference in Tel Aviv this year. And Prometheus, I was showing this protocol in uh, Briga conference by Hodel Hodel this year. The next step is uh, simplify these protocols down to components. So making this generalized lightning network and make it extendable so it can be a real true LNP, LNP like TCP from TCP AP for hosting the future layers of internet of value. So we need to extend Lightning Network for this stuff. And when we examined parts which require each of these technologies from the Lightning Network, we found out that there are only four cases which we need to cover. The first one is to change the structure of the funding transaction. Many of these protocols, they need to have a funding transaction structure differently. For instance, if you would like to have a channel factory, you have a multi-party funding output controlled by multi-signature other than two of two. We need to tweak information in existing commitment outputs. Like with RGB, we need to tweak public keys in commitment transaction, uh, which, will behave differently than the current Lightning Network specification regarding the deterministic generation of the private keys and public keys for transac commitment transaction outputs with uh, some predefined initial private key and public key. We also need to add custom outputs to the commitment transactions and dependent transaction trees. So in commitment transaction today, we have four types of output to remote, to local, HTLCs uh, offered and um, received. But many of protocols like, like DLCs over the Lightning Network or Lightspeed, they will require additional transaction outputs. And the fourth case that we have to change is make HTLC a function based on uh, Sorry, I, I haven't finished this sentence on the slide. Uh, I was in rush. Um, basically, the idea that we need to make HTLC a module, a replaceable model, for instance, being replaced with other mechanism, and based on the previous point, I mean, on the custom output. So HTLC can be one of the types of outputs that participate in the commitment transaction, which can be replaced, for instance, with another part of uh, another type of outputs like PTLC output and be used for payment routing. Uh, I would like to show case 
these four points, how they can work out with uh, explaining this idea of light speed micropayments. You can go into GitHub with this link and read more about that. I will go really quickly and briefly through the technology. So what is the problem with the Lightning Network micropayments today? We try to solve with light speed. Uh, well, there is no problems. Lightning Network was created for micropayments. But for instance, if you would like to pay per server request, per API call, for each time you'd like to pay, even with this new LSAT proposal, which is great from Lightning Labs, but even with it, you have to generate multiple signatures. It's about six signatures that have to be generated upon each payment, meaning that you have significant CPU overload. And if you need to do a payment per API call, that overload will be probably more significant than performing the API call itself, even on server side. There is a, there, there are multiple network and inter-process communications, I named that, happening not only because client between client and server, but also between lightning nodes and between client and server and corresponding lightning nodes. So basically the overload for each payment is huge. This problem can be solved if we will add another type of output. Uh, I named it light speed uh, funding uh, into the commitment transaction. And basically, this output will pre lock all these multiple payments up front to hash controlled outputs. Again, it's not possible to describe in a short talk uh, all the. Um, design of the protocol, I advise to go to GitHub and to read through it and also leave your comments because it's very early stage proposal. It's an idea, concept described. And with that, basically what you do, instead of generating signatures, you transfer with, within, for instance, HTTP headers, like with this LSAT, a hash of this micropayment output. And this hash gives the ability to server uh, sorry, a, a pre-image of the hash. And this pre-image gives the ability to server to unlock a specific output out of these multiple outputs. There are still some problems with this design, though, like uh, the size of this LSF transaction can be enormous. And this publication cost may can break the micropayment economy because it can cost more than Satoshi Satoshi's allocated to all of the outputs. And it can't efficiently work with the sub-Satoshi payments, and it is limited to the number of payments in the single micropayment transaction to the maximum number of outputs, which like only tens of thousands. If you have talk about high-frequency micropayments for gaming, there could be millions of transactions, millions of payments happening over an hour. So we need something more extensible. And it still can be built with a light speed if we will use RGB. This client validated data structure stored outside of the transaction, bound with a single UCLs to the micropayment transaction, having just a single output. And it will work in the same way like in the previous case, other than you don't need to publish all this client side validated data to the blockchain. So the problem is solved and with, solved. And with this solution, we have this light speed, light speed micropayments where there is a zero overload on client or server to reach payment. They can be easily combined with LSAT as a technology to transfer information in the request about the payment, the pre-images of these small outputs. Now RGB, not Bitcoin transaction output, but RGB outputs on in the client validated data. They are scale well to sub Satoshi payments. They can handle millions and millions of transactions and no overload of on the commitment transactions happen, transaction happen. So that, that that is the case of the technology that can be built with Lightning Network. But as I said, it does require change in the commitment transaction structure. And a tree of the transactions or transaction plus RGB data that will be depending on top, upon of that. Another case of the technology that probably many awaits it is discrete lock contracts over Lightning Network. They are being described by Uriah Bender and René Picard. Uh, and basically, they come up, because the scheme on the right side is quite small, so I will uh, enlarge a part of it. Basically, within the commitment transaction, we need to add another output, discrete contra lock contract funding, multi-seek, 
and underneath of it there will be another tree of transaction depending on that existing inside the channel so again we have the case when we need to extend the commitment transaction with additional outputs so how to bring all of these changes to lightning network Christian Decker made a good work uh, on layering out the structure of the Lightning Network, which is actually a set of protocols. And this layering uh, can help a lot with uh, modularization and the help with bringing these new protocols uh, into the Lightning Network. So basically, LNP components that we see for generalized Lightning Networks network are a transport layer, based on noise, noise XK protocol. It is well-defined in Bolt 8, and it is a general protocol for data transfer, protocol that is better than SSL, and it, it is better than uh, an HTTP with SSL because basically it defines a binary data transfer in a P2P environment where you don't have a trusted central authority issuing certificates and public keys, but you still can ensure the method message integrity and authenticity authenticity and encryption and this protocol can be built can be used outside of the lightning network without any changes to run arbitrary p2p data transfers because many of these protocols they require nodes to exchange information outside of the lightning network scope like with rgb you have to transfer the client validated data to the other nodes and lightning network it's not good to abuse the lightning network to transfer large data structures but you still can use a transport layer of lmpbp to do that work there is a messaging layer on top of this transport layer well defined in bolt one and it can be extended already today with a tlvs uh, and a custom message and it is basically an rpc layer for decentralized web because if you have a custom message and you can add a arbitrary data with a tlvs you can use a lightning network messaging protocol without any change changes to both specification to exchange arbitrary messages outside of the scope of channels or outside of the scope of payment functionality. And you can use that to negotiate the structure of funding transactions, commitment transactions, and so on without any limitations. The next layer built on top of messaging layer can be a channel negotiation layer. So you can use, as I just said, a messaging to negotiate how you'd like to structure a funding transaction or channel parameters. And this can be done uh, with exchange of partially signed Bitcoin transactions. Uh, they can be used as a form of insert, update, delete API for a channel. For instance, if you negotiate a commitment transaction, you can propose a partially signed Bitcoin transaction with a single output and it will be an output that you would like to add to the commitment transaction structure and the other party will be just doing that this output is the funds for this output are taken from your money not the other party there is no reason for the party not to accept it and this idea is actually the idea of christian decker we were discussing this uh, idea of generalization lightning network with him and he said that psbts are kind of database uh insert update delete requests they can be used in that way if we will put them for instance in tlvs with the custom messages over the messaging layer and it will work today in the lightning network for any enabled node we can signal this functionality with the feature flags and we will have it without modification of the bolts themselves and on top of that we can do uh, there is a channel operation layer which today runs the actual channels it's the rest of the lightning network specification but even this operational layer can be extended with a tlvs and custom messages within the channels within the gossip protocol and uh, it can be used to leverage to, to exchange the information over the channels like rgb enabled channels or dlc enabled channels that's the idea of how generalized lightning network can work, but we have, we, we need a, a lightning network nodes to be ready for that. They have to support multi-peer channels in the future, hopefully they have to abstract from the 
specific and hard-coded structure of commitments behind each transactions. They have to separate all of that levels of protocols and modules of protocols, like may, probably basing on this layerization by Christian Decker on that slide that I've shown. And uh, basically today, the existing nodes are not ready to adopt that. They have all these products problems. Well, some of them are much better, like Sea Lightning. They not a monolithic architecture. We can replace channel daemon, for instance, with another channel daemon with extended functionality. They have plugins in Sea Lightning and Declare, but in most other ways, still a lot of problems. If you'd like to quickly experiment with these protocols, as of today, you can't do that that easily. So, uh, in development. Uh, of the protocols, we had to do a modular implementation of the Lightning node, and I will be just briefly covering it in the next few slides. And we used this this uh, this architecture requirements while building it, trying to make it microservice based, not uh, monolithical, able to scale up to multi Docker enterprise environments. So it should be both able to work in the on the raspberry pi raspberry pi without docker but it should be able to scale on the server side as well to be used by people who like payment processors up to the visa through output scale it has to be ready for high load processing processing for micro high high frequency micro payments and it has to use that's why it has to use a zero message queue api not json rpc or unreliable ipcs it should be an enterprise level uh, apis and interprocess communications it has to utilize a subscription or push notification session based module so you can subscribe on the notifications about transactions, uh, ch channel change, uh, ch channel state, and so forth. Uh, and it can be useful both for clients and for non-custodial mobile wallets. Uh, it should separate concept of peers and channels because there will be a lot of communications happening on the la layer of uh, lightning node connected to other lightning node without establishing a channel yet or without establishing channel at all. And it should be extensible with a new modular functionality, like should be able to replace HTLCs with HTLCs. So we have created this uh, quite initial structure of the Lightning Node. And over the hackathon that was run of Lightning Hack Sprint over the pre previous weekend, we basically created a proof of concept. It can be found uh, in our GitHub. It's called LNP Node under the LNPBP uh, organization. It is based on Rust Lightning uh, library by Matt Corrala and Square Crypto and Chain Code Labs and LDK. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to cre recreate uh, the code for running the actual Lightning uh, network functionality, existing Lightning network functionality. It's, it's all out there in a well-written Rust uh, language. Uh, so we're just using it. And it is a multi-thread with a non-blocking input-output. We use Tokyo for that. If you know about Rust language, it's quite an advanced system that allows you to create, easily create and handle multi-threaded uh, processes with a safe uh, inter-process uh, data sharing, communication, synchronization, and all that stuff. It follows the best practices which we were learning from Sea Lightning and so many advisors by Christian Decker, and it is suitable for that generalized lighting network that I just described, ready for all that stuff to happen within it. So we we propose to all interested party to look into the code architecture, contribute issues, contribute UPRs. Additionally to that, we had to use Rust Bitcoin library created by Blockstream, Andrew Pels, and other uh, contributors uh, to not we don't want to parse the whole blockchain via bitcoin core uh, rpc request and many of the applications that i will be talking that i was talking about all these layers they require quite complex requests against bitcoin blockchain uh, which can't be done with a modern electron server or bitcoin core like rgb 
for instance, we need to get all the transactions for the single use seals that span some specific transaction output. Uh, that's why we, we, we've designed this uh, light uh, Bitcoin node. It's not valid, fully validated node, at least yet. It uses fast Bitcoin. It allows you to run arbitrary, it, it parses Bitcoin blockchain into a database and uh, with a indexes and you can run arbitrary complex queries against transactions and bitcoin blockchain even using uh, mini script so you can construct a mini script descriptor and get all the transactions matching this descriptor or subscribe to the notifications through the zero message queue about new transactions matching this descriptor to when they find, they will be delivered to your software. And basically, the Lightning node will use this uh, Bitcoin node to uh, get the channel, the, uh, get the transactions on channel opening, get notification about chain and closing, and all that stuff. So the, the Lightning node architecture is shown here. We, we have a separate processes that run multi-threaded peer connections, one per peer, multi-threaded channel demons, one per channel, on-chain that tracks through this Bitcoin node, uh, what happens on-chain, gossip routing and API model, again, a connection from client with a subscri possible subscription-based uh, interface, and it, they all communicate through zero message queue bus. This thing can be used quite well in building non-custodial clients and wallets. Again, not just non-custodial clients and wallets for Lightning Network. What we are focused on while supporting the existing Lightning Network support all the future stuff, RGB, DLCs, that's all there in API, uh, and it all will be working with this software. So basically, mobile wallet will only store a keys, locally keys, and it will use Rust and PBP library with the proper WASM uh, buildings and mobile buildings. Buildings, of course, Rust and PBP is based on LDK Rust Lightning and Rust Bitcoin, and uh, it uses a remote server just to get the notifications when the when the channels, for instance, uh, the Lightning node needs to sign a new version of the commitment transaction. It says it sends a push notification to a mobile application, and this application in background signs the creates a signature and sends it back to the server. So the channel state uh, status is updated, while the mobile wallet don't require to be all the time opened or to run. A lightning node itself. So I'm probably out of time. I would like to ask you to look into this stuff that we are developing and to contribute. Here are the links you can visit. Basically, a standards, a standard ref reference implementation of the standards as a Rust library, Bitcoin and Lightning node under intensive developers. They are proof of concept, very early stage. And all discussions probably better to held over the IRC on LNPDP channel in Freenode. So other materials that I reference it, you can Google for my talks on the Lightning Conference in the Transylvania Conference this year. Uh, on Storm and Prometheus, I gave talk on Tel Aviv and Riga this year. So thank you very much for your attention. And I think we can proceed back to the questions. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for that, Maxim. It's really interesting. Uh, probably have to re rewatch it a few times, as I imagine a lot of other people will as well. Um, uh, but a lot, a lot of content there. So, how likely is you think that you're going to get those changes or the changes which um, you would need into into Lightning? Well, we are quite fortunate. We don't need to make any changes just into Lightning. So we are building on top of existing Lightning Network. It's, uh, we already have the functionality that we need. It's TLD extensions to messages, feature flags, and custom messages that we can do with feature flags. Namely, that's all. Of course, there should be, whenever we will have Taproot and uh, L2 or uh, PTLCs, pay to point, uh, we need to change the Lightning uh, network specification itself, but uh, it's it's just a case. 
just three cases which will require the change of the specification themselves and again we are not trying we are not governing these uh, things because it's other parties who are pushing forward pay to payment points uh, standard and l2 they think it will be a community interested in bringing Schnorr signatures and taproot to the lightning network so yeah i did wonder should... whether the taproot and Schnorr would make what you're trying to do easier um to to implement is that would that would that be right Same. well to, to implement we would like to have a node lightning node in which you can easily the day the taproot will be out there and all the changes any changes that will happen in lightning network specification because with existing lightning nodes with this existing software the architecture sometimes have to be heavily updated and we would like to have a software that can be easily updated to bring this new stuff um would you would you would you sort of prototype that on a separate uh, network on a separate lightning network or would that be interoperable with sort of current lightning network well again it's up to lightning network community to probably it will be a separate network we will just be providing the community with the stuff uh, with the node modular node that can be easily experimented at how it will be set up for the separate network or for mainnet it's a question of the actual developers yeah it's interesting so currently rgb would theoretically work on on just on bitcoin leveraging just just using the bitcoin blockchain and not not lightning um, well right now it's rgb still under the development we have finished uh, on chain part we are working on wallet libraries integration libraries and i'm working actively on lightning network part which will be hopefully finished till the beginning of the summer okay nice interesting there's actually Sorry, a question on rgb um on twitter uh, Max is asking, can RGB assets, client-side validated state in general be protected by keys on an offline signing device or a hardware wallet? The, uh, the RGB assets work with a Bitcoin transaction output, meaning that whatever can be done for Bitcoin transaction output, there is nothing more required to sign the transaction. Like if you can do a hardware wallet, of course you can do for Bitcoin transaction, but you can do that for RGB. If you will be doing atomic swaps or DLC for Bitcoin, it will work for RGB without anything additional required. So we just leverage uh, Bitcoin script and uh, Bitcoin ownership model, uh, not trying to re-implement a will. Okay, so in the way, I, the way I kind of envisioned how RGB works is you have a Bitcoin transaction and then it's almost as if the asset is kind of anchored by that transaction and then when you said you're sending passing the asset to somebody else or the the, the token to somebody uh, else it's passing a transaction yeah i will explain you, you're right and i will try to explain even in simpler words words for instance what is the asset it's our agreement between me and you for instance or some other parties and we can we are free to say for instance that uh, I am attaching the ownership of my assets. For instance, I have shares of Apple company. I don't need, need even Apple to know about that. I'm saying that I'm attaching an ownership of shares of Apple company to this unspent Bitcoin transaction output. And it's agreement between two of us. It's nobody else in the world know that. There is nothing happens in the Bitcoin blockchain when, when I say so. We both remember that. and whenever i will try to transfer these shares to you you have to say to which asset you would like to bind them to and again there is nothing in bitcoin blockchain happens the only thing that happens that when you will be spending this output with their bitcoins you have also to do something with assets that's the only requirement so that's why Whatever, whoever has the right to spend the, the output controls the asset. Like it controls, uh, like this party controls Bitcoin on the output. Do you think that we'll see more of a rise of utilitizing Bitcoin um, uh, blockchain? Just, just stick with Bitcoin and RGB, I suppose. But do you think we'll see more people utilizing it in, as a, as a, with different commodity uses? Like you have the decentralized identity initiative and um, the idea of being able to uh, peg a, a, an asset or, uh, and, and, and then have it, that kind of transaction. Do you think that'll happen more with Bitcoin as, as time moves on? 
Um, uh, it kind of yeah. to me it feels a bit like gold. Like originally, you know, it's a, the, the 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 thing which makes obvious sense is to use it as a store of value and as a medium of exchange. But then you can then that over time people realize that gold had all these other really good uses. Do you think that will happen with Bitcoin? Well, probably it will. For sure, the centralized identity is one of the applications uh, for RGB. Unfortunately, I'm quite sure that there will be also a scam happening like with this ICOs and Ethereum. Somebody will certainly find a way to use this stuff in a scammy way. Fortunately, we are in the days post-hype of tokens. Nobody interested in them anymore. So I just hope that it wouldn't happen to a large extent. Do you find that, um, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we're all focused on Bitcoin, but uh, inevitably uh, some uh, experimentation has been done outside of Bitcoin. Do you think it's worth paying attention to the experiments which have happened outside of Bitcoin or just to ignore them and then try and do things properly on Bitcoin? <laughs> so should we should we pay attention to the altcoins and their shenanigans? <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't know. It's probably the question to... To, to it can be answered differently depending on the goals of, of people. I, I'm not paying attention. I uh, may would may look at some parts of cryptographic technology, for instance, bulletproofs, so they being used in green. So that's in this regard, it's quite interesting to see uh, how successfully they've been used there, but it gives no no value to green itself, uh, in my eyes, at least. So it's kind of exp experiment out of the wild, in the wild so that people use and apply bulletproofs, and we can be more sure that it, it's being tested in some production type environments. That's the only point I can see here. There's another question it's, about RGB. Sorry to jump in. Yeah. Um, are there any demos or speculative proof of concepts out there, um, or of I think RGB in specifically, but also um, of the various things you've been talking about and kind of in the same sentence, uh, will we be able to use RGB assets in two weeks or in the summer? No, in the summer, in two months, probably at least. Uh, I think the first thing, one of the first things, or probably the first thing that will be there, it will be a used tether on RGB. Uh, there will be also, there is a, no, a, a number of other projects who are interested in playing with that at the early stage. Right now, we, we don't have any any specific demo. You can download code, compile, and uh, if you'd like to play from command line stream with a Bitcoin core, partially signed Bitcoin transaction and that stuff, you will be able to issue a set and transfer it. But it's not ready for wallet integration yet. Uh, over the course of months, I think there will be some initial SDKs for wallets to use these assets, and we're in talks with many wallets to that might be interested in using them. Uh, the the rest of technologies, basically, uh, LNPBP Association and I, myself, uh, we are focused on finalizing RGB. The other technologies, they will be done later or they are done by independent parties. Like short, short bit guys, they are working on uh, adapter signatures with uh, uh, other people and contributors, uh, which will allow DLCs and which will allow pay to payment points. So it happens independently from us. And uh, again, a lot of people involved into DLCs. So it's more questions to them. It's uh, I, I was uh, I I don't like that everybody will get impression that it's me or uh, or some organization behind me yeah. doing all that stuff. It's not. Yeah. I'm I'm just giving an overview and a yeah. vision of uh, a united vision of many people. It's not like all of them share it's hundred percent. But I had many talks with the Christian Deckers, with the Ruby Picard, with um, many community participants. Uh, about how we can build stuff on Lightning Network and Bitcoin Protocol with Adam Beck, with Blockstream guys. And I'm summarizing these things into a structure that can help to minimize the effort required to bring all these technologies in, uh, in wild, leveraging the stuff we are doing anyway for RGB. Like we are just doing not RGB, we are doing RGB in a way that will also enable other all these technologies to happen sooner and faster. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, from what I've seen of RGB, it's very much a, a long-term research project, which is now turning into something. And, and similarly with the stuff you're doing with the Lightning Network and the LMP, BP, uh, the idea to do a lot of research and then bring a lot of ideas together and then and then hopefully have something which you can then um, build out. Um, yeah, no, I, I kind of feel that, uh, I don't know if you agree with me or not, that the current, obviously the world has changed. Um, and our last uh, big, you know, for the world, the last uh, time we changed the way in which our money works was was in Bretton Woods uh, post World War Two because we you know the axis of power changed and it was time for a sort of new monetary order. Um, so do you feel? I think you know with a probably likely de recession, maybe depression, which is going to follow this crisis. Do you feel a sense of urgency that people? Because um, I know you've worked on uh, the Swiss franc, digital Swiss franc. Um, do you feel a sense of urgency that maybe people might look at these technologies sooner rather than later um, to build out uh, um, money pegged to Bitcoin or using Bitcoins, leveraging Bitcoin security? Well, there is a sense of urgency for doing a parallel financial system. And it's good that we have a Bitcoin. And it's good that we have some Bitcoin scalability with Lightning Network, but Lightning Network is very, very early days. And for real uh, industry of payments, Lightning Network have to evolve a lot. And also for a proper financial system, we just don't need only money. We need uh, securities, I mean, normal securities, uh, uh, not KYC securities like shares, like if you do some loans or bonds you will need them in the proper world as well outside of fed outside of the current stock exchange so these all technologies they are required to build a bitcoin into a proper financial and economical layer trustless smart contracts and without that uh, the failing economy it would have no other route to boost up outside of regulators and governments as was planned by many and it is time now, the time is coming, but the technologies are not ready yet. So, yes, there is a big sense of urgency to speed up with this process. Yeah, and I think that's a very good point, actually, that, um, you know, Sabo is social scalability. The idea of being able to be, use smart contracts to have social scalability and remove some of that friction, the bureaucracy and paperwork um, uh, and, um, and, and rent seeking. Uh, in industries could be very beneficial to helping an economy uh, grow and, and and recover from the sorts of crisis um, we're, we're, we're in. So, um, yeah, it's been great. Have we got any extra uh, questions from the chat there, Jeff? Um, yeah, we could. Another questions, question on Twitter, um, which is, um, well, a little bit random following the discussion, so I just throw it in here for completeness. Yes. How many communication rounds um, computation is required for the setup phase of light speed micropayments? Uh, I'm not ready to answer this question right now because basically light speed is a concept idea. So there is no specific protocol, but I can assume that uh, it will be about the same as for setting up a channel. So tens of them. But the idea that you have a setup phase, one per million payments like so it doesn't affect the the efficiency. I think another. Um, sorry, just to just to go back to my point. I was just thinking then. That I think another um, uh, area which is probably going to be bootstrapped is is people now like us. You know, we're, we're interacting in a way which, well, maybe we wouldn't do in, in in person. But many more people are spending time on the internet and and doing a lot of things which they would inherently be private, like a chatting with friends or whatever or um and they're more aware now of, of the problems with plugging their data into the internet and you know we're all the women of the big companies and, and governments for taking our data um so the idea of the sort of decentralized identity uh, which i know um rgb and the lmp bp stuff can help with uh i think i think that could be bootstrapped as well um well, I am interested as well because I read somewhere else about this digital Swiss franc initiative. What, what, what exactly? Because that really sort of pricks my interest. Just, just because what, what, what I've got you here. Uh, what, what? So, how long? How long is you? Have you been working on that idea? Um, and, and do you, do you, will that be something which 
would be a, a real is that going to sort of manifest as a real um uh product not product or well well uh, maybe maybe you got something wrong i'm not working on digital frank idea uh oh. we, we just had uh one talk with a uh, Bitcoin Swiss, who actually involved in the implementation of Digital Frank, and they said that will, they will be very interested in RGB because they'd like to bring Digital Swiss Frank to Lightning, and we will probably have some follow-up discussions with the technical team regarding that, but there is nothing more happening in this regard other than that. We are, so okay. I'm, I, I'm not tracking all the details with what's happening with the digital frank. Just don't have time for that, <laughs> frankly yeah. speaking. Uh, well, I imagine you're going to get many more knocks at your door um, uh, with people asking uh, for similar advice and, and consultation um, in, in the, the, the near future. Uh, so I haven't really got any more questions there. Thank you so much, uh, Maxim. Uh, thank what's you the, what's very the... much. No, thank you. Well, what's the, what's the plan now, Jeff? I think you're going to open the floor to anyone who wants to pop in and ask a question or yeah well um, first of all thank you from my side as well maxim it's been a quite interesting a good overview i think uh, there was there was good to to get some more topics for the next shows as well um so thank you there was um also Yurai was uh, commenting that uh, he wanted to thank you and especially he's working on some dlc stuff and um, it's in the youtube comments if you want to read them i think you don't have them open right now but if you cl um, click on the video you would see it and Michael is asking right now. Um, for uh, your thoughts on Rust Lightning and its current state, is it close to completion? And has it been a positive experience working with it? Uh, yeah, uh, Rust Lightning uh, done quite a good progress over the last uh, year at least while well, we've been developed for more but i've been tracking it for at least a year right now it has uh, a full implementation of version one of lightning network specification and uh, it's part of rust bitcoin environment together with rust bitcoin and many other libraries so i'm really happy that it's out there and it's actually uh, i would say that what I would like to have in Rust Lightning is better layer separ separation. So if you need Rust Lightning to use for a mobile wallet, it's a time to start playing with that. But because we need Rust Lightning to do all this stuff that is not yet in Lightning Network, that's why we are trying to refactor some parts of Rust Lightning or build the stuff on top of that that will separate different layers, which are not separated in specifications sometimes yet. So in this car, uh, regard, for sure, we would like to have more modular library, but again, it's not the purpose of Rust Lightning. It was created as a SDK primarily for wallet developers. And this, in this regard, it should be doing work quite well. Well, I wasn't developing a Lightning wallet yet in my life, so I can't say from that perspective, but it is a, it is a decent SDK. Thank you. Um, I think we're gonna have somebody talk about DLCs uh, in one of the future episodes. Um, and we also already have a guest for the next episode next sunday and we're going to hear from ellen markets so less protocol heavy more of uh, an econ economic application of the lightning network and so we hear about that um please give us a thumb up if you liked it um, and if you didn't like it don't give us a thumb down uh, or also follow this channel for future updates. If you want to be on the show, just give us a shout out and we'll see what's possible. And also keep an eye on the Lightning Hack Sprint. We did it last weekend, which um, was one of the projects that happened was um, the Rust node. Um, we're going to do it again in May. There's no specific date yet, but probably early May. So if you go to wiki.fulmo.org, you can already kind of get a feel how it will work. And you can already put up a challenge or a bounty if there's any specific project you want to work on or you need support, then wiki.fulmo.org is a good place to go. Otherwise, um, this week there's going to be a Socratic seminar in Berlin, which is also online. 
I will post the link in the YouTube comment in a second. So if you want to talk, uh, come to a Socratic. It's also hosted on Jitsi. Um, you can turn off your audio and your video so you can be completely anonymous, just like the spirit of the Socratics. And we'll also try to apply the Chatham house rules as good as possible. So when there are no recordings, no stream, you can only participate if you're in the live stream in the Jitsi room. Um, that's for this week. And oh, and what, what, one more point. Uh, is the is the uh, Matamo still running for, it is still running, isn't it? The, the one which we you set up last week. Yes, weekend. yes. It's, uh, we have a public Matamo instance. It's mm.fulmo.org. I'll also post a link again in a second. And um, it's Ma Ma Maxim's Maxim's projects on there, isn't it? The um, LM uh, LMPPP, the node. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. On there, you can you can find Maxim on the MetaMost as well. It's Dr. Olofsky, and there's a channel called Rust LN Node, which is um, which was used for the project coordination on the past weekend. So you can also go there and ask further questions. Um, so you have lots of lots lots of channels and options to to get into touch. Um, yeah, thank you both for coming. Um, I kind of forgot to introduce Ben in the beginning. <laughs> so ah. <laughs> th th thank you for coming in and, and co-hosting. Um, ben is Ben Ark at BTC Socialist on Twitter, and I think most of you know him for for his many plentiful tinkering projects. Uh, he likes to put lightning into hardware and make cool projects, cool little machines. Um, for example, the Quickening, which is an open source POS system, which has been used, for example, for, um, by Room 77 in Berlin. But which again, if, if people are interested and if they check out, I really do recommend people, anyone who's interested in um, developing or, or just sort of reading, you know, What's going on on some projects like um, the like the LMBP node? Uh, really do check out the matter most. Just just chop on there and then check out the channels. There's a channel for the the quickening, the the point of sale, um, and then for a bunch of other projects as well. It's all fascinating, interesting. Um, yeah, but yeah, Max is particularly interesting, uh, and I had a lot of traction too. So it's nice to see so much traction coming out of the. Was that that was the point of the of the hack hack weekend, wasn't it? The hack sprint, yeah. um, and it's worked, which is great. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, is it is it just going to sort of stay open? The matter most is going to stay there until people stop using it, or <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, just come on there and uh, participate. All right, um, thank you, Maxim and Ben, for for the first episode of Pod Splits. Um, we're going to thank stay you for this great great initiative doing all these conferences and yeah. hot screens. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. It wouldn't be anything without you. So we're going to stay in this Jitsi room. I'm just going to say bye and post a link to the Jitsi room. So if you're interested, you can join the Jitsi room and talk to Maxim and Ben and I, and it will not be recorded. So for now, here's the final goodbye for today. Take bye. care and see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you yeah. for coming. Bye-bye. We still stay stream. Are you still here? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think we're still stream. Are we still streaming?